Hey, it's Andrew, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about four features hidden away inside the Facebook ad manager that you probably don't know about, but that can dramatically improve your results. So let's get straight in and look at the first one. And that is the ability to update customer list, custom audiences without resetting all of the data on your ad sets. Uploading an existing email list of your customers into Facebook to use as a custom audience, either for retargeting or as the foundation for a lookalike audience are both great tactics and they're both things that I recommend doing. But what happens is often people will use these audiences and then when they get more customers, they obviously want to update them. So they export another list of customers, create a new custom audience, and then go and exclude that new custom audience, or they create new lookalike audiences and then they create new ad sets to target their new lookalikes. Now, that's good, but it's not ideal because what happens when you update your existing ad sets is it resets all of the optimization and all of the learning on that, those ad sets back to zero. And obviously throwing away all of that data and starting from zero is not a good thing. It's going to have a negative impact on the performance of your ads and nobody wants that. But the good news is you can actually update those customer lists on Facebook without having to create brand new custom audiences every time. Here's how you do it. All you need to do is go over to the audiences section inside the Facebook ad manager, find the custom audience that contains your current customer list, click on that custom audience, and then click edit. From there, you can just click add customers, upload your new CSV file with your new updated customer list, and it's going to automatically add any new customers in that list that aren't already in the custom audience to the custom audience. Boom, done. It's going to then flow through to all of your lookalike audiences that are already running inside your ad sets without resetting the learning on those ad sets. Now that's a much better way to do things because now you can continually improve the quality of those custom audiences and those lookalike audiences without resetting the optimization and the learning on your existing ad sets each time. Okay, so moving on to the next one that you may not know about. Now this one's really handy. Often we just go in and we create an ad with Facebook in mind. So we create our ad, we'll upload our image or our video, write the copy, look at it in the preview, it looks good on Facebook and hit publish. Now that often leads to ads that are more expensive than they need to be because what we should be doing is creating ads that look native on all of the different placements. So that could be Facebook, Instagram, Instagram stories, Facebook stories, it could be Facebook right column, whatever placements you're running on. And given that most people now run using the all placements option, you really should be customizing for a wide variety of placements. But what you don't wanna be doing is creating separate ads for each placement. Well, the good news is you can actually customize your placements and have different ads for different placements within the one ad inside of the Facebook ad manager. So the way to do that is when you set up an ad, you can actually upload your creative write your copy, and then after you do that, you can click the little drop down next to whichever placement option you want to customize. Now, once you click that edit button for any placement, it allows you to change anything you want. That could be the creative, meaning you can crop it, you can trim it, whatever you wanna do. You can put a whole new creative in if you want. You can customize the copy, the headline, the description, everything. So here's a couple of examples of where this comes in handy. Let's say you're creating an ad and you've set up your creative and copy for the Facebook newsfeed. You can go in and crop the image to square because we know that square or four by five is native for Instagram. So that's going to get you better performance. You can also, and if you've watched any of my videos before, you may have heard me mention this, customize the copy or the text for your Instagram ad and remove the links because we know that people can't tap links inside of Instagram ad copy. So you wanna actually remove the links from there and tell them to click the call to action button instead. So that's just one quick example of how customizing a placement helps. Another thing that I do when I create ads is I will come in and I will customize my placements for Instagram stories and Facebook stories. And I will put in custom nine by 16 creatives for those placements because then when my ad shows on stories, it's going to look native. And that's exactly what I want because I know I get better performance when my ads look native and I don't get those weird looking stories ads that are like a cut off image with some text below that's also cut off because the creative hasn't been customized. So that's a really, really good way to increase the performance of your ads by customizing them and having custom elements for each placement. 
All right, before we get to the next one, if you like this video, don't forget to tap that like button, hit subscribe, hit that little bell, you'll get notified whenever I release a new video. I really do appreciate that. It makes a huge difference for the channel. So a big thank you if you do that. So this next feature actually allows you to do what we call maintaining social proof on your ads. So what happens is when you run an ad for a little while, you're gonna notice that you get lots of likes, you get comments, and people will even share that ad, yes, people share ads. And what this engagement actually does is it helps improve the performance of your ads. So the more comments, likes, and shares you get, the lower your CPMs become because Facebook sees that ad as being a positive user experience and Facebook likes that, so it lowers your costs. And also, it actually helps the performance because if people see an ad with lots of likes and comments in particular, then they're more likely to stop and pay attention because it shows them that, hey, other people are engaging with this. This must be something interesting. I'm going to check it out. Makes sense, right? It's like when you see a restaurant. You're walking past restaurants, you see all these restaurants with no one in them, and then you see this one restaurant. And it's got a huge line, there's not a spare seat in the house, there's people waiting to get in. That's where everybody gravitates towards, it's just human nature. So when you create new ads, often they'll have a winning ad set with a bunch of ads in there that are performing well, and people will duplicate that ad set, try testing a new audience, for example. Now, what happens when you just duplicate that ad set, if you're not paying attention, is those new ads that you created, the new ad set, will lose all of the social proof, meaning they're starting from zero. But you don't actually have to do that. There's a simple way that you can maintain all of that social proof when you do duplicate those ads to test new audiences and whatever else you're going to test. Now the way to do that is to simply go into the existing ad, click the preview button, and click view Facebook post with comments. Now what you can then do is grab the post ID from the URL, and often it looks like this because you've used that custom creative option that I just talked about in the last tip. Um, so if you have, it looks like this. All you need to do is click on the publish date. That's going to link you to another ad. From there, you can actually grab the post ID. Now, once you've got the post ID, create your new ad, click on the option to use an existing post, and then you can click on the enter post ID button. All you need to do then is paste in that existing post ID and you will see that existing post come up in the preview window. Then you can just hit publish and you're good to go with your new ad set and the existing ad with all of that social proof maintained. Doing this really does help improve the performance of your campaigns. If you can build up a lot of social proof on your high performing ads, it's going to make a difference. Next up, when most people are assessing the performance of their ads, there's a big component that they don't even think to look at. And that's the negative feedback. So Facebook keeps track of, as I mentioned just before, positive feedback on your ads. So it's looking at how many likes, comments, shares, and positive engagements they're getting. What people don't realize is they're also watching the negative engagement. So when people hide your posts, meaning hide the ad, or they click hide all ads from this advertiser, or they report it as spam, all of these things are considered negative engagement by Facebook, right? It's pretty obvious. But if your ads get a lot of negative feedback, what it does is it pushes the cost up dramatically and it can also even put your ad account at risk. If you get lots of ads that get negative feedback, then Facebook can even shut your ad account down because it views this ad account as overall providing a negative experience for their users, and they don't like that. Now, this little trick is going to allow you to see how many people have actually clicked hide post and clicked hide all posts and provided those negative engagement signals. And so you can check your ads. If you notice an ad is getting a lot of these, you can pause it, you can create new ads to try and prevent that from happening. So here's how, all you need to do is go to the ad manager and just like before, we wanna click that preview button and we wanna click view Facebook posts with comments. Now that's going to open up the post and if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a button that says see insights. Click on that and that's going to bring up a bunch of insights for this post or ad. Now you can see there, it shows you how many times people have hidden the ad, how many times people have clicked hide all posts, plus the positive engagement as well. So you can see all of these different things, really interesting metrics about your post that you can't see inside the ad manager and most people just don't realize that's there. And that's why it's included in this video. Now, another great way to improve the performance of your ads overall is to improve the click-through rate. If you can improve the click-through rate, meaning more of the people that see your ads actually click on them, then that means you get more clicks for the same cost, which means you also get more leads and more sales from your advertising budget. So you're going to get more bang for your buck or better performance overall of your Facebook ads if you can improve your click-through rate. Now that's a big topic in itself. So I've created a specific video to show you how to dramatically improve the click-through rate on your ads. You can check that out right here. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.